supports life within the body. It spread through all the entire living body. And this is called the life faculty. So this is the faculty by reason of which the body is a living organism. It's probably something present in all of the cells. And so the life faculty has the characteristic of maintaining the coexistent kinds of matter at the moment of their presence. And its function is to make them occur. And then the seventh type of concrete material phenomenon is edible food. And this refers specifically to something which is called nutritive essence. That is, within the food we eat, like when we eat you know, a mass of food, not all of that food counts as nutritive essence, as the seventh type of material phenomenon, because a lot of that food is just the support for the nutritive essence, which when the food goes through the process of digestion, that is not assimilated and metabolized into the body, but that just turns into waste and gets excreted from the body. But within the food we eat, there'll be what the Abhidharma calls oja, which means nutritive essence. And that is, would be the substances of nutritive value within the food. Maybe in modern terms, we would call this the protein, the carbohydrates, the vitamins, the minerals. All of that maybe comes under the class of oja. So this is the nutritive substance contained in gross edible food. Its function is to sustain the physical body and it's manifested as fortifying of the body. Okay, so now we've had four material elements, or four primary elements. Anybody have a calculator? Well, I'll put it on a piece of paper. Okay, four primaries, five sense faculties, four sense objects, and then sex determination, we have two. The heart base, one. The light faculty, one. Nutritive essence, one. So nine, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18 kinds of concrete material phenomena. And so this explanatory passage here is quite important. So it says, the 18 material phenomena just enumerated are grouped together as matter possessing intrinsic nature because each type has a distinct objective nature for example, in the case of the earth element, hardness, in the case of the water element, cohesion, in the case of the fire element, heat, and so on. They're also called matter possessing real characteristics because I think this is actually, my explanation here is wrong, because they're marked by the three general characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. I think they're said to have it's, I don't think it should be real characteristics, but I think Sadlakana should be Sanskrit Swalakana, their own characteristics. They have their distinct characteristics, and that is the earth characteristic has its character, or the earth element has the characteristic of hardness, the fire element the characteristic of heat, and so on. I think that should be corrected. It's not real characteristics, but their own characteristics. And these are the specific characteristics of each of the material phenomena. They're called concretely produced matter because they are directly produced 
by the causes or conditions of material phenomena, <coughs> which include, we'll come to that tomorrow. And they are also called, this sounds redundant, rupa rupa, which is here rendered material matter. That is, it's matter that has some kind of actual substance. And it's these types, 18 types of matter, that are to be investigated and to be comprehended by insight. In that case, they are to be contemplated by way of the three characteristics. Okay, now we come to the other types of material phenomena. These are called non-concretely produced matter. And as I said, these are characteristics or things that are actually abstracted from the concrete types of matter as their modes, attributes, stages of development and so on. And so coming, going through these, we have what is called limiting material phenomena, which is the element of space. And if we go to the guide, we see that the element of space in the Abhidharma is not understood as what we might call universal space or all-embracing space, but it's the void region that delimits and separates objects and groups of material phenomena, enabling them to be perceived as distinct. The space, elements, the space element has the characteristic of delimited, delimiting matter. Its function is to display the boundaries of matter. It is manifested as the confines of matter or as the state of gaps and aperches, aperches, gaps and holes. I guess that they would say that if the cup is empty, the empty space within the cup is the space element in the cup. And I wonder if they were aware that the cup is filled, is still filled with the air element. Maybe they weren't aware of that, I don't know. Okay, then comes something which is called, the, the next class is called little hard to render. In Pali it's called Vinyati Rupa, which is translated <laughs> intimating material phenomena, not intimidating. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's material phenomena that make you afraid, but intimating means communicating. So these are material phenomena that are responsible for communication. And these are the, explained as the means by which one communicates one's ideas, feelings, thoughts, plans, and so forth to another. And so there are two means of intimation or communication. One is bodily intimation. The other is vocal or verbal intimation. Now bodily intimation is when we use our body to convey things to others. I guess this can be done both consciously and unconsciously. Like, okay, somebody asks me, I'm walking along the road and then I'm at a fork in the road and somebody is coming along and I ask him, which road will take me to Cold Spring? And then the person points, he doesn't say anything, but he just points in that way. So he's using his body to communicate an idea. So though he just points down this road, so I know what he's saying is this road leads to Cold Spring. And then, if somebody is getting on my nerves, if I go like this, you get the idea. 
don't carry on like that. Or if this is a hall where the people are sitting in meditation and I come in with a friend who's chatting away and then I go like that. I'm indicating keep quiet so he'll understand. And then of course for people who are deaf, there's sign language, so we could use the, just bodily movement to communicate things. And then there's probably unconscious bodily intimation, what they call, they call that body language, when one conveys one's feelings through gestures, with almost unconscious gestures with the limbs, with the facial expression and so on. Yeah, even with, where if I go like that, or if I go like this, it means I agree with you. And then, of course, there's verbal intonation, vocal intonation. That is when one uses speech to convey one's ideas, attitudes, feelings, and so on. So their function is to display intention. And then they are manifested as a cause of bodily movement and of verbal expression. Okay, then we come to the next category. This is called mutable material phenomena. And I said that this category comprises special modes or manifestations of concretely produced matter. It also includes the two types of intimation because those are sort of changes that take place in matter. But the three Distinctive phenomena within this category are lightness, and I guess its opposite would be heaviness. So I guess there would be a spectrum from lightness to heaviness. Malleability, the ability of matter to be shaped and molded. So a spectrum of degrees from that which is very malleable to that which is rigid. And then the third is wieldiness, which would also comprise a spectrum from that which is extremely wieldy or workable, that, that can be worked on, to that which is difficult to work upon or unwieldy. And I think that these characteristics came to be selected out because of maybe the experience of meditators, the way meditators experience the body in meditation. Like sometimes the body seems to be light, malleable, and wieldy, so that one could sit easily and sit for long periods. And when the body is light, then the mind becomes light, and so one can concentrate easily. But then, when the body can become heavy, one feels the body is heavy, or then it feels, sometimes the body then feels rigid, not malleable, and not wieldy, and then the mind is difficult to work with, and so it then becomes difficult to obtain good concentration. And so I think it was through the meditative experience, experiences that these three characteristics came to be given special attention. <laughs> and so we have space element, two types of intimation, three types of mutability. Then we have what is called the characteristics of material phenomena. These are related to the characteristic of impermanence, but these are said to be four stages in the evolution or de development of some material phenomenon. So we have these four types of material phenomena which are called material production, continuity, decay, and impermanence. 
So production is said to be the first arising of a material process. The initial launching or setting up of the process Maybe in the case of a human body, maybe production maybe is what occurs at the very moment of conception, that the body comes into existence. Then continuity is the repeated genesis, that's the repeated production of material phenomena in the same material process. Okay, so here's an example is given. given. The arising of the body, sex determination, and heart groups at conception is production, while the subsequent arising of those same material groups throughout life is continuity. Okay, so this is production of matter, Production of matter, which is the initial setting up of some material process. Continuity of matter is the non-interruption of the process. Then we have decay or aging. This is the maturing, aging, or decay of a material process. And its function is to lead them on towards their termination, towards their end. And so when the body reaches its pinnacle of strength, health, and development at the age of 33, What feels more closer to the facts? 55, 65, I think 28 should be like the, the real peak. Anyway, after that comes a gradual decay, 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 until we're sunk into old age. And then impermanence is the actual termination of a material process. It's the complete breaking up of the material phenomenon. So in the case of the human body, it would be the death, the physical death of the body. Okay, so this takes us through the 28 types of matter. And then we just have a verse which summarizes them. And so we have 11 kinds of material phenomena which are broken down into 28 according to their specific characteristics. I think you can see the 11 kinds more easily if we go to, instead of looking at the verse, look at the table on page 236. So you can see Column on the left is the concretely produced matter. Here we have the four great essentials, five types of sensitive matter, four types of objective phenomena, two types of sexual determination, the heart base, the life faculty, and the nutritive essence. So those make seven groupings. Then under the non-concrete matter, we have the limiting phenomena, or the space element, the communicating phenomena, that's the bodily and verbal intimation, the three types of mutable phenomena, and the four stages of characteristics of matter. So altogether we have the 11 groupings. Okay, so that takes us through the enumeration of matter.
So any questions about, about this? Okay, Ravi, Mr. Mien, and Larry. Okay, it's not a question as such, but I was thinking regarding the space, okay, sir, with the, uh, the time to the Time the Buddha probably they didn't know that there was air, it's all empty. You know, it was mm -hmm. new solidity, yeah. the new liquidity, yeah. but they didn't know yeah. this was empty. So, and so, therefore, when it came to the example of the cup, yeah. maybe they were uh, considering the, the area of the cup exclusive of the air. In other words, if you dip that in water, that's, that, that's a volume that comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe it's that, not the... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just my thought. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Nguyen. Mm -hmm. I have a very short... Wait, wait. Take, take the mic. <coughs> the, the name of the chapter 6 is, in Bali form, is Rupa Sangaha yeah. Vipaka. The, yeah. the translation is from Vedia Meta, on page uh, 234 mm -hmm. in the heading. What does that Vipaka stands for? Uh, my my yeah. reading may be wrong. But yeah, Vipaka usually means like analysis or breaking down. But for, it was a little bit awkward to put that in the title of the chapter. Oh, Larry. Yeah, um, I was reading the, the section on sex. Yeah. And I was thinking more along the lines of gender rather than sex, because it talks about um, you know feminine or masculine features yeah. and stuff like that. These are all social constructs as opposed to you know, something that's biologically determined. So. Yeah. No, I think what's primarily intended is the biological determination of the person as being either by sex a male or a female. So maybe they. They don't have a clear distinction of sexual determination. And by gender, you mean things like the characteristics? Yeah, I mean, they talk about uh, mas feminine or masculine features, or yeah. typical female masculine occupations, yeah. Yeah. or deportment. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. what but I, I think. What, what's primarily meant is what determines the being as either male or female by way of sexual uh, identity and sexual function. But then the, the gender features are generally derivative from that, that there can be differences. I thought I saw a hand here. We'll just take one question here, then we'll take a break, a little break, and then come back for the meditation. So Suki, yeah. Um. One day, I'm a little uh, intrigued by the, the word baba. Uh, here it means um, the gender uh, material which um, has the difference of gender. And then we also have a baba in uh, dependent origination. Is there uh, like uh, any kind of a common something? With the, the word papa, um, I mean, when you when we have a papa in dependent to origin, is that the moment when we actually have a, a, a the being as a sexual differentiation or not? No, they're, they're actually different words, so they're from the same root. Um, what we come, what we see in dependent origination is bhava with a short a, and this is bhava with the long A. Bhava usually means the nature of something. And so this is the nature. And this is just, the word bhava is used here as a kind of abridgment for iti bhava, which means female nature, or purisa bhava, which means male nature. So the nature of somebody or some being, the nature of some being as either female or male. 
but it's not, it's different from buffer. Okay, so let us take, I think we're supposed to go to the depth of 415. Okay, we take a five minute break, then we come back for the meditation. <laughs>